Hi, welcome back to Our Hollywood. I'm Kim. I'm Daniel. I'm Kylie. Um, <laughs> sorry, my hair got stuck in my glasses. Yeah, I was that like, was, hello. Sorry, sorry. Um, okay, so welcome back, everyone. Today we have with us Kylie, because um, we're going to be talking about Horror at the Academy Awards, which is controversial. I think so, sometimes. Because yeah. um, it's like the right before October. This is like Halloween is coming up. It's almost here. Mm-hmm. And so, why are you laughing? I don't, I don't know. Um, <laughs> and so, I don't know. I just, when I saw the list of movies that had been nominated for Academy Awards, I was kind of, I honestly didn't know The Exorcist had any. Yeah, I didn't know either. I was really I literally sure texted we, Daniel. I was like, The Exorcist was, was it 10? Was nominated for 10? Yeah, and it won. Yeah. Multiple ones. Yeah. Okay, anyway, but before we get into that, uh, so Kylie, do you want to tell us a little bit about how you got into film, like what you're majoring in, and then what got you into horror specifically, since what we're talking about today? Yeah, um, I've always been into film. I feel like both of those stories are kind of intertwined. My grandpa got me into like 50s sci-fi horror when I was super young. So like Invasion of the Body Snatchers, The Day the Earth Stood Still, um, House of Wax, like alien movies, stuff like that, like since I was like five or six years old. So um, I just really developed a love for storytelling and for movies and stuff, especially with horror. And one of my favorite movies when I was younger was The Corpse Bride. I was obsessed with it. I love Monster House. Like I read all the Goosebumps books. Uh Um, And then my senior year of high school, I took a tour of Chapman, the Dodge College of Film. And I was like, whoa, man, like making movies. That sounds really cool. So yeah, then I applied. We got into Chapman, but it's just, that's too expensive. That's, you know what I mean? So, um, but Calithrin is great and I met so many cool people, like these, these fine people. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so what, what are you majoring in specifically? I know, is it, do you guys have the same major? Cause I know the film majors at like Calu are like t- labeled differently. Well, and, some people have the comm, but most people have, I think you, have, you switched over. But yeah. Answer that. Yeah. I think was it just last year or is it this year that the film major is now an actual major at um, just be Last calm. year, because I graduated with the film and TV degree. So Okay, yeah. So yeah. yeah, I'm a film I'm a film general major and then I, I'm getting my minor in creative writing. Okay, cool. And that's I I really like that your school kind of did a whole other major for film because I I really thought it was like a specifically a film school. And then when you told me that it wasn't, I was like, oh, I don't know if that's just because the experience that I had with it, but I really thought it was okay. a film school. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Okay, so we can get started with today's topic. Um, okay. Oh, wait. I know Kylie because we went oh. to school together. Just a note for the podcast listeners. Uh huh. Well, also Kylie also helped out on a short film once yeah. again, as we yeah. say that every episode. Yeah. Um, and we were very traumatized by Kimberly's. Yeah, we trauma drama. bonded over a uh, our advanced cinema class. No, we trauma bonded over no, your messy room. No, but we trauma bonded okay. <laughs> over our advanced cinema class. I feel like that's everyone. Oh, yeah. That went to that school. Yeah, because anyways, I'm not gonna slander, but yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. You know, you we know. love David Francis. Yeah, we stand David Grannis. Yeah, okay, let me get off the one. Okay, so now we're going to get into the yeah. the topic. Um, so, okay, we found this um, article, and it was like the only six uh, horror films to ever be nominated for Best Picture. Um, so we're kind of going off of that mainly. Um, and then we added Parasite at the end because the um, article is a little bit outdated. Um, mm. So, was you want to talk a little bit about the videos you put in the... No, because I just did it in preparation. Oh, it was just you were doing research? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so then we'll start with the first one, which is The Exorcist. Well, I guess we could, well, we could just talk about, sorry. I don't know what, I think our energies are really chaotic today. Yeah. Um, anyways, sorry for the listeners. I'm sorry for Kylie. Um, I think in general, like, we should talk about the relationship between horror movies and, and the Academy. Like, well, okay. Well, I was shocked that there was even six okay. nominated in the history of her. I didn't know The Exorcist was nominated. I didn't know Sixth Sense was nominated. I knew about the other ones, but I, I didn't know Black Swan was horror until like recently. Mm-hmm. And I also didn't know it was nominated for anything. Yeah. 
because like I was when did that movie come out like 2000 like I don't know I just wasn't yeah. aware that that was a horror movie although I love that director and Mother was great and so I think that well yeah you watch Mother so you would think I'm obsessed with Mother I know you are okay anyway um well yeah I think he's a really good director but I think when it comes to horror I think the Academy Awards like to pretend that it's just like movies like like trashy horror movies I think that's how they see it um uh, they don't realize that like a lot of the times horror movies really tap into like the worst in our society and in our culture and they really have a lot to say I think um that a lot of other genres can't exactly do yeah um I don't know and then there's like monsters in it which is pretty cool <laughs> and it's another element to it that most some movies can't you know because it doesn't <laughs> work with that universe yeah, <laughs> Um, horror is also like all about pushing boundaries and stuff and making people uncomfortable, which I think is another reason why you don't see it at the Oscars too much because it it is about pushing boundaries. But then like, then again, so is what a lot of film is about. It's pushing boundaries and making social commentary. So it's really interesting to me that horror has not made more appearances at the Oscars. Yeah, there's a lot of, um, and we'll talk about this a little bit at the end, but there's a lot of horror movies that should have been nominated a hundred percent. And they weren't just because people were like, Oh, they're horror movies. And we don't really yeah. need that. I think it, now it's definitely getting a little bit more. I think something interesting that I saw when I was like researching was like a lot of times people will, it'll start off like as a horror movie, like Jaws as like a horror movie, um, you know, as an example. And then people, once they get like Oscar buzz or once they've been nominated, they kind of just write it off as a thriller mm. to try to make people feel more comfortable with liking it, which is just such a weird, yeah. it's just weird how people perceive horror. And I think, yeah, like you guys said, like it's, it gives a different type of way, like your soul social commentary, it's just a different way to view it. Mm-hmm. But like, a, for example, like Jordan Peele, he does like a really great job of like, it is like it's a real life thing but it is also horror because that's a horrible thing for people to have to go fucking go through yeah and it's like obviously it's notched up because it's a it's fake but it still has roots in reality yeah which i don't think a lot of people get with horror i didn't get that before like i literally thought it was just like like mm-hmm. another version of fantasy which is like not something that i'm really into yeah. so that's why i kind of like never like so like Daniel and Kylie are like really big horror fans. I yeah. I was not like I I'm just getting into it. Like I think we talked about this before, but like I used to think probably how all these voters think is like oh it's just like these stupid slasher movies. Like I don't really care. Like why? Yeah. Like there's nothing to it. But my eyes have been opened, and I <laughs> understand now. And I thought something other interesting that I read in this video. Or read in this video. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Guys, I just woke up like a half an hour ago. Um, <laughs> was that it's see, seeing out fears on the screen gives us a chance to confront them in a contained way, which I think is a really interesting take on horror movies. Yeah. Like, oh, wow. I, I didn't really think about it like that, but I was like, yeah, that's a, that is an appeal, is like seeing something really rancid, like go out on the screen, but then have the comfortability that like, hey, that's fake. <laughs> <laughs> well but i think it, but also uh, it's real yeah like a lot of with these horror movies like there's elements of realism in each one but then they like turn it like for example sharks exist but they're not exactly like going out here murdering a bunch of people yeah um mm-hmm. like unwarranted and like some people believe in like the supernatural but then the exorcist takes it to like a whole other level and is like mm-hmm. commentary on religion and stuff like that so i think it's definitely like they take bits and pieces of realism and they like twist it to Mm -hmm. for whatever they are trying to say um in that specific movie okay so let's start with the exorcist because so when did you when did you guys first see this movie because i wasn't allowed to watch it when i was little so i saw it maybe in like high school um and i was like oh this is a good movie but i don't think i got the same experience as people who were like scarred when they were children because i was like oh i can see that this is a movie yeah you know um i the first time i saw it was actually really recently it was this year um because i was getting my dad really into horror he's never really been into it before and i was making him watch all my favorites 
and we decided to watch it because it's a super uber classic and um so we watched it this year so it's pretty fresh for me I I, I think it's honestly just because it's aged pretty poorly at this point yeah. I don't I don't really understand I don't I don't get the hype of the exorcist and I'm a classic horror fan like I love Halloween um I love poltergeist stuff like that um and I love 50s horror so but the exorcist is one that I just I just didn't get but I know that Kim had a little bit of a different experience oh, yeah. because <laughs> I was like glued to my television as a child so like I literally would just like you know flip through the channels and like I remember one time I was with my friends and we were like in middle school flipping through the TV and then they're like oh my god we should totally watch The Exorcist and I was like I don't want to be lame because uh-huh. I was like very much so like I really wanted everybody to think I was cool right obviously naturally and so I literally was like okay uh-huh, uh-huh, let's do it <laughs> and then we put it on and I, like literally I think all of us were just like I was like can we please turn this off like it was like I didn't even think I I don't even know if I finished it and I I don't know it was just terrible and I thought it was so interesting that I had that experience we watched it in daylight because I feel really yes I couldn't even like I think it was just so scary I think it was like the the makeup that made it like extra scary yeah I don't know I was I, just a scaredy cow so <laughs> middle school I mean I agree I do think it aged really really badly I'm sure if um, I watched it now it would be like a little less like intimidating but just because I have that memory attached to it I'm like I don't know if I ever want to. I think it's the thought of what's happening more than what's at what you're seeing on screen mm-hmm. Because, like, if you describe the story to someone, you're like, oh, that sounds terrifying. And then you watch it, and you're like, yeah. Like, the special effects just don't look good. When did this come out? 1974, I believe. Oh, well, then, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I definitely think, not, not that this is this completely unrelated to that kind of new award thing, but the, they made it into a TV show that came out recently. And I think that made me appreciate it a lot more. Huh. It was, like, a sequel slash remake kind of thing. Okay. Um, and then when I saw how they built off that story, I was like, oh, yeah, I actually do like The Exorcist. Because I actually, yeah, I used to hate it, too. Um, but I think the TV show did a good job of making me appreciate it a little more. I don't know. Yeah. It was just interesting. Um, but, okay, so then uh, The Exorcist got nominated for 10 Academy Awards, which I think is the one that got nominated for the most on this list. Um, That's crazy. Yeah, and it won Best Adapted Screenplay and Best Supporting Actress for Linda Blair, the little girl who played um, Reagan. Um, and the guy who wrote the screenplay is also the guy who wrote the novel. Huh. Um, I do think it's interesting. I found this article <laughs> that was saying that like right after they, because it was nominated for Best Picture as well. And I don't know who won that year, but The Exorcist did not. And <laughs> the writer was really upset about it. And, like right after when they were doing all the press, he was like trash talking it the entire time um, about how like The Exorcist deserved to win and everything. And I was like, I don't know. I just find it so interesting when, like, on the post-Oscar interviews, the directors are just, like, trash-talking the other movies. I'm like, oh, my God. So, yeah, it lost to The Sting. I just looked it up, and that's an, yeah. that's an excellent movie. I, yeah. It's embarrassing that the director was like, my movie, my horror movie should have won over The Sting. Yeah, that's, like, embarrassing. Like, are you not embarrassed he won, he won too, right? Yeah, yeah, he won the screenplay, and then they won Best Supporting Actress. So I think... Take that's what you good. get, you know? Yeah. That you yeah. got two, that's more than a lot of movies ever get. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's an honor just to be nominated, especially with how the Oscars perceive things. Especially being like the first horror movie to do it. Like that's kind yeah. of a big deal to get nominated I, ten times. Ten. Yeah. That's crazy. I wait, I think Parasite got oh just kidding, six. Parasite got only got six. Only. <laughs> only. <laughs> um okay. So the next one is Jaws. It got four nominations and won three out of four of them. So it won Best Musical, Best Original Musical Score, which, of course, um, <laughs> won Best Film Editing and Best Sound Mixing. Um, but it didn't win Best Picture. Yeah. That's another thing I saw with, like, the development of horror in the Oscars. Like, horror movies have been, like, nominated before in the past, but it was kind of exclusively only for like makeup and stuff. So that's like kind of why we didn't talk about every single horror movie mm-hmm. that's been thing. We kind of focused more on the ones that made it like further than yeah. just the technical like makeup stuff. Um, mm-hmm. So I, I think that was interesting that it wasn't like he didn't get like a best director nomination because like, I don't know, like 
just growing up like you just hear jobs like jobs yeah. is just ingrained in our culture I, I think, I think, which is really weird i mean i, I, I don't know why right either now. but like I even think before like, i was into everyone. film i think yeah i think even before i was into film like people be like oh jaws blah, blah, blah. and i'm like have you seen jaws mm, yeah okay i love jaws um i think it's one of the first movies i saw that i was like oh i want to make movies um, yeah. which not to give Mr. Spielberg that much credit. It's because I feel like he's so conceited when I read this. Like, so I, again, I looked up like Jaws Academy Awards and I found that Steven Spielberg was so convinced that he was going to win, um, uh, not best director, I think it was supposed to be best picture, that he hired his own film crew to like record his reaction and then he didn't oh. win. And I just, when I read that, I, I feel like he needed to be humbled a little bit. <laughs> like yeah. you already are one of the most iconic directors ever, tone it down. Yeah. Are you saying that to Steven Spielberg? Well, maybe he didn't. He didn't. That made him iconic was Jaws, I think. Yeah. So, like, he didn't know. He wasn't iconic at that time. What did, can you Google what Jaws lost to? Um, I think it was 19... Oh, The Godfather Part 2. It was 19... 19- oh. 75. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, The Godfather Part 2 is pretty fucking good. Yeah, I was like, okay, I can't even argue movie. with that one. Um, um, I think also, like, just maybe he thought because, like, he overcame so much in the production of Jaws. Yeah. So mm-hmm. like, I think from from a filmmaking standard and like, just like a director standard, if I fucking technic, my fucking mechanical shark just fucking sank to the bottom of the floor, I don't know what the <laughs> hell I would do. So Oof. like, I think, yeah, I think- Everything just went wrong. Ju- yeah, I think it's justice, like justified that like- He was upset. He, he was a little bit upset because when you go through hell and high water for your film, like, I feel like you do get kind of a complex about it. But I think the Oscars do, does pop your bubble. <laughs> and they're like, mm, you're not actually special, so. Yeah, I think that the reason why Jaws became so iconic too is, I feel like I'm probably forgetting about some other obscure creature features, but I feel like this was the first creature feature that was pretty realistic. I mean, not in scientific terms necessarily. <laughs> because sharks don't attack people on purpose, Mm -hmm. really, um, or swim in shallow waters. Just the fact that it was something that could happen in something like the ocean, which is just so unpredictable. And I feel like it was a topic that hadn't been super explored in film, at least not since, um, I want to say, like, 40s and 50s, because I feel like 40s and 50s was kind of when creature features were really big and then he kind of brought it back with a more realistic story and so i think that's why it scared people so much and why people like always had such a hard time going back into the ocean afterwards i think the first time i saw this i was like seven and i didn't go past like the breaking <laughs> for like a year after that so i yeah jaws changed everything which is crazy every- for it being like a creature feature as you were saying um, and it also, like, I guess it's kind of different, but, like, Jaws walked so that Shape of Water could run. Like, yeah. Shape of Water would have never been nominated if movies like Jaws hadn't been already, like, established in Academy Awards history. <laughs> the way you, why, why, was that so shocking to you? I had such a reaction to that. Um, well, it's true, because, like, that movie, when I found out that that movie was nominated and then that it won, I was like, a monster movie, that is the coolest thing ever. I mean, it's a great movie, okay, but also yeah, it's like a monster. Like there's literally yeah, 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 a monster yeah, yeah. in it, yeah. um, which I was not expecting that to happen at all. But I love Guillermo del Toro. That is so. such an interesting movie. Yeah, it's such an interesting. Like I remember, I didn't really know anything about it going in, and then once I once I did, I was like, huh, <laughs> no, <laughs> I was anticipating. Also, that didn't get nominated for makeup, like the special effects. I thought it was CGI. Chip of water. Is it not CGI? But there is pro- no, there oh. was prosthetics like involved. Oh wow. Yeah. So hmm. <laughs> a snub. <laughs> Anyways. Um okay, <laughs> best so, picture. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. It's it, it was okay. It'll <laughs> yeah, survive. Um that's what the thing is like I would be okay with just getting one. That like if you miss out on another one, you're like, no, oh, we'll leave some for the others. You know? Um mm-hmm. okay, so Science of the Lambs. That movie came out. Oh. No. Okay, first of all, I I haven't... yeah, I think that's one of the more. Let's start like we're starting to get more in the recent ones because these are it's like these two back then, and there's like twenty year gaps between them, and then these are a little bit more um, 
closer to each other. Um, so I recently saw this movie. I had never seen it. Um, and I love this movie so much. I didn't realize I was going to love it this much, but it was nominated for Best Picture, Best Actor, Best Actress, Best Director, and Best Screenplay, and it won all of them. As it should. As it should. As it, honestly. It's uh, a really good movie. Because I watched it before, and I was like, mm, I don't know. Because I was, it was like kind of like before I was into film. And then we watched it in film theory class, And I think once you have like a lens about something, like we were trying to like figure out something or like, you know, you kind of have like guidance behind it. Mm. I was like, damn, I was like, this is really good. And like, I don't know, I just, I really enjoyed that movie. It was like, and I feel like that class had to like maybe change my mind on a bunch of different types of movies. But I think um, and I forget what Anthony Hopkins' character's name is. Oh, Hannibal Lecter. Hannibal Lecter. Sorry. <laughs> I was like, that's okay. Guys, let me mind you. I just woke up. <laughs> Hannibal Lecter. And I think that is just, like, one of the best, like, kind of, like, villain type of characters yeah. ever written. Because it's, it, it genuinely, like, it sticks with you. That shit is scary. It's so scary. It's so creepy. Uh. Um, and he's he's so complex too in the relationship with Clarice because yeah. it's a pretty mutually beneficial relationship and he's not completely an antagonist. Like there's even a line from the movie where he's like, whenever feasible, you should always try to eat the rude or something. And he just kind of distinguishes himself as a higher member of society, kind of like a god, but he just kind of he he kills with a lot of deliberation a lot of purpose and kills rude people you know like bad people um so it's murder's wrong okay eating people's wrong right, obviously right. <laughs> right. but it messes with you a little bit it messes with you yeah he also has a really charming relationship with clarice and he's just also anthony hopkins he's only on screen for like 18 minutes or something and he yeah. was the best actor he carried the movie too yeah that's crazy i didn't even know that and then when i was like thinking about it you're like you're right he's barely in the movie yeah but you feel like that's the what the movie is mostly about yeah because well clarice is like basically her whole motivation is every she's like literally stuck on every single word word that he like gives her yeah so like it makes sense also he there's also the whole other buffalo bill character yeah um yeah the whole like and then i I didn't get that the first time I watched it. I was that the first time I watched it. I was probably like, I was young. I was probably yeah. like middle school. So like obviously, what the like I, I was so confused. I was like, what is going on at the end? Like the last like half hour, I was like, what the what? I thought this movie was about something else. Yeah, yeah, when, I definitely thought it was about when a I night. when I re- watched it as adult. I was like, this is literally genius. Like I literally didn't even. I didn't even put two and two together. It holds up very well, too. It holds it's up so, so well, which is, I think, is, like, really rare for a lot of these type of movies is, like, they don't really hold up, but, like, this shit does hold up. Yeah. Like, the Reagan's little, the head turning, all those effects look really bad now. And Jaws, <laughs> also, you could, like, it looks like a toy shark the entire time. Um, so it kind of hinders the movie a little bit. But Science of the Lambs, just, there is no part of it that looks outdated, yeah. in my opinion. No, because it's so it's so in your head, and a lot of a lot of what's shown is surprisingly implicit. Because there's like the shot mm-hmm. of him fighting off a piece of the guard's face, but you see it from like he's holding his head in front of the camera. You don't really see it, and so that definitely um, is a benefit for the movie, I think. It's yeah. Not well, and I, also I would say that the social commentary is still pretty relevant because yeah. it kind of gets into like Clarice's relationship with um, her superiors and stuff. And she works, she's surrounded by men and Mm -hmm. she's kind of constantly objectified. And that is unfortunately still relevant. Yeah. Yeah. I never really thought about that until like recently. And like when I watched it again, I thought like we had to think about it with like the feminist point of view. And I was like, I didn't even realize right? she's getting I fucking, either. she's, I would be yeah. livid if people were treating me like this. Yeah. Like, it, it just, yeah. And I think, yeah. Also, I think it's interesting. like, another Sorry. thing, <laughs> okay. like, yeah. another thing that I think is also interesting is that this movie also had, well, it had, like, three sequels. One that was also based off the, no, like, another sequel novel. Mm-hmm. But it also had a spinoff uh, TV show, Hannibal, which is, like, a prequel. And they're doing another one called Clarice 
which is also like another prequel, I guess. But I don't know if it's related to Han. I never saw Hannibal. I saw a couple episodes. Um, it's good. It's good. It's so good. But you I, have to be, you is, have to be into the, the the dark the the weird shit. You, you got to be into that. So <laughs> is it like gorgeous? Is it the same kind of like? Because when what I heard about it. There was like supernatural aspects to it. I don't know if that's true. Oh no, no. Oh okay, I saw because I remember I used to wear a hot topic and like they had a Funko Pop and it was like this like thing with horns and I was like, what does that have to do with anything? Mm. I don't know. If, do you know what oh, I'm talking about? It, it kind of has to do with some of the symbolism of the show. They use oh, a lot okay. of um, like I don't know, kind of devilish symbolism and stuff because the show is very very artistic a lot of stuff is implicit kind of in line also with the movie um they they use they take a lot of artistic liberty and it's really surprising it was like airing on cbs or something it looks like an hbo show though and -hmm. it's also starring very famous very talented actors um we're getting off topic (laughs) (laughs) no but yeah i think it's really interesting that these a, it's a really popular show yeah yeah it was like a cult classic kind of show like it got yeah. canceled and people were furious but i guess i don't know i guess we'll see how clarice I love is when that happens. I don't know what clarice <laughs> would be about like not not that she's not interesting but just like i guess just her being a cop yeah i think it would probably talk more about the feminist aspect like think about the time we're in right now that's true and if it's a, i don't know if it's a prequel to the movie I maybe. think it'll, un- like, maybe, I think it'll understand more why she trusts a fucking serial killer. That, like, yeah, you know what I mean? Because I feel like the first time I watched it, I was like, why would she even trust him? Yeah. Like, he's literally, like, yeah. what? Like, but I think it'll it'll set up her character well to understand how she made the choices yeah. that she did in the movie. Because I feel like working. sometimes, like, I feel like a criticism is like, why the fuck, how is she thinking like this? Because yeah. like, it, it's, it's more of like a you just kind of see the gears turning in her head. You know, she doesn't like yeah. give a fucking narration, which is a cop my, out. My, um, my theory for that though, is because all of the other men are so disrespectful mm-hmm. towards her. Hannibal Lecter is so polite to her and treats mm-hmm. her with so much respect, um, which just, the, the whole so creepy the, though. Con- yeah, it's, it's, it's creepy, but like the contrast of that versus how other men treat her, the contrast yeah. of that versus how he's a literal cannibal. It's just yeah. it's, it's so fascinating. I mean, it was yeah. like, getting the nominations and the wins. Absolutely. I think it's so interesting that like to this day, there's, it's still getting spinoffs. It's still getting prequels. Because oh, yeah. um, it's a fascinating there's story. There's so much lore and like yeah. mythology to the story um, <laughs> that I'm excited to see more. Um, okay, so The Sixth Sense. Uh, what year did this come out? 2000? No. I think was it was 2001? Hold on. Oh, okay. Let's okay, see. well, it got nominated for Best Supporting Actor, Best Director, Best Supporting Actress, um, Best Film Editing, Best Picture, and Best Screenplay. Um, hmm. And it didn't win a single thing. Oh. Which is, that is just... <laughs> I don't know how... Also, I didn't know... I didn't remember Tony Collette was in this movie. She like, is... I, yeah, and I, do, I that just completely went over my head. I genuinely do not remember her in this movie at all. Um, this is one that, of those movies that I saw too young, and so it really scared me, and so I just hadn't revisited it in a very long time. I, I still oh, yeah, that shit scared it. me when I was young. <laughs> yeah, that movie, yeah. I rewatched it, and it, it's I don't know what I was scared. I think of. especially as a child, like watching it because of, like the person going through the stuff is a child, like. I think it's extra scary because you're like, oh my God, can it happen to me? I don't want to yeah. do that. No, I wanted I to see ghosts that. so bad. I literally wanted to be the ghost whisperer. Like I, Absolutely. cause my mom used to watch ghost whisperer. And so I was like, I want to be Jennifer Love Hewitt. Like she looked, she's so cool. Like she helps all these people. Um, but anyway, sorry, we spoiled the success ending, but I feel like that's one of the most iconic twist endings yeah. to exist. Like up there with like Lou Guy and her father. Like it's, that line is just so memorable and that scene too is like scarring everyone's memory um but yeah this is a great Mm -hmm. movie also i think it's interesting that i don't think the kid did anything else right or am i wrong i don't think so Uh, that's a trend with like horror movie Uh, child actors yeah he um Haley joel osmond uh he kind of fell off he had some issues i 
like drinking and whatnot so i think that's probably oh. why but he actually he was in um he he was in oh he was in the biopic about ted bundy he he played um oh, i don't know his name but he was like uh ted bundy's ex-girlfriend's new love interest it was like it was kind of a small role but that oh was, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah oh okay well yeah, good yeah, for yeah. him that he's like getting back yeah. into it. i mean if that's what he's into but i i think that there's definitely a trend this is completely i'll talk off topic but that like a lot of the kids that are like in iconic horror movies just were never in another like the kid from the shining is a teacher what, the guy who played what? Danny. yeah he's just a teacher which i thought was so interesting so weird well maybe teaching is just what he's passionate about and he's still collecting the royalty checks and he's oh like, absolutely <laughs> he's so rich like he could just buy all the um anyway me getting completely off topic it's just i just think kids in horror movies is so interesting because i'm like how would your my parents would never I think the screenplay is really <laughs> interesting. Sorry, just thinking about it. Like, the screenplay is really good, I think, especially, I don't know. Well, M. Night, like, how do you say his last name? Shyamalan. I think M. Night Shyamalan is oh. a really good writer. Um, mm-hmm. I think he got caught up a little bit in the whole, everyone was like, oh, what's the twist ending going to be? And it, like, so for some of his movies, it oh, kind of, yeah. like, hindered the overall project because he was like, I'm trying to make a twist. Um, but that twist was good. Yeah. It was so good. I literally was like... And it's been done over so many times. Yeah, yeah. Like, it started that whole, oh, they were actually dead the whole time trend. Yeah. Which you still true. see in things true. to this day. Um, but it's a good twist. I don't think I've ever... Well, I mean, now it's very predictable. Like, I can yeah, be watching Yeah, but think about them. it, like, when... If you watched that when it, like, first came out. Yeah. And, like, like I, I'm sure people were fucking floored. That's why, like, it, like, it... <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it is. It's like I, it's because it's like the first time anybody's ever done that, really, yeah. and like such a unique type of way. Um, which is, yeah, I feel like I'm, t- I'm totally blanking. There's probably other like horror with twist ending prior to that one, there most definitely is, but I feel like he was the first one to kind of do it that big. And now I'm such a big fan of twist endings. I love when I'm super caught off guard and then all the pieces fall into place. Mm-hmm. And he kind of made that popular. I don't know. He kind yeah. of yeah. was a pioneer of that. That's what he he's known for. Yeah. Like, like, literally, that's a shtick. Yeah. I also think that started the trend of like um, horror movie twist endings. And mm-hmm. I think it also, you know, kind of for some horror movies, it just doesn't work mm-hmm. because they're trying to focus more on the twist than like actually making the twist make sense. Yeah, that's true. Um, and I think what works with this movie is that the twist doesn't come out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. Like you could watch the movie again and be like, oh my God. Yeah. Like, it, like it was so right obvious. Um, and I think those are the best kind of twists where you watch it again and you're like, I don't know how I didn't see this coming. Um, yeah. Cause they lay the pieces out for you. Jordan you know? Peele. Jordan oh, Peele. absolutely. We're a Jordan Peele stand clip. I'm so excited <laughs> <laughs> to talk about Get Out again. Like we always talk about Get Out, but it's just such a good movie. Yeah. Um, okay. This Black Swan. Yeah. 2011. I have never seen this movie in my life. I love this movie. Okay. Is it actually so scary? Just, uh, or like a considered horror? Yes, I think it could be considered horror. I think it's one of those ones that people could write off as a thriller, but yeah. Well, because Mother. Like, think about but like. Mother feels like hardcore horror, in my opinion. Yeah, it's not as hardcore as Mother, but it's definitely like, it's Up pretty. That alley. Yeah, it's. Yeah. I love this movie so much. I watched it when it first came out. I think it's interesting to see the year. So it was in 2011, the Oscars, that it was nominated for Best Picture. First of all, it was nominated for four, Best Actor, Best Picture, Best Director, but only, oh no, that's, yeah. Nominated for five, Best Film Editing, Best Picture, Best Director, Best Cinematography, but only one for Best Actress for Natalie Portman, which like, honestly, well-deserved. That is, that character is like, Oh my god! It I still think it's one of those movies that I still think about today. Like I love that movie. So, twenty eleven. Oh, sorry, me interrupting. I'm glad that Natalie Portman is like we're not mad at her anymore because people were so people mad at her, her after the Star Wars movies um, uh, that I'm glad that she got her Oscar. Well, it's because it's, we've talked but, about yes. Star Wars fans before. Yeah, I know I'm, they're unbearable, but like me being one, but like yeah, they're they're unbearable. <laughs> but I think that Natalie Portman did not deserve the hate she got for no, those movies. No, it's not really her fault like the whole Definitely movie not. was bad like there was multiple pieces that were bad yeah. about that so like mm, internalized misogyny also I she say. doesn't know where her oscar is for this one yeah oh i no i'm sorry that shook me to my core i would literally 
never i would look well, at think it every about morning. how much of an esteemed actor she is like i think she's okay well in the article she's like it's a false idol and i was like oh my god like i know but also i still want one all right Anyways, <laughs> sorry is that a religious uh, thing or what? Oh, no i don't know it was <laughs> Anyways, sorry We're getting off that again. year the movie that okay so these are the movies that are nominated 127 hours true grit social network the fighter all amazing movies winter's bone inception Black Swan, The Kids Are All Right, Toy Story 3, and The King's <laughs> Speech. And you know what the fuck Wait, one out of on. all those? The, the King's Speech. Speech. The King's Speech I one. I hated that movie. It's an awful movie. It's Sorry. Not, okay, it's, it's definitely no, I, an acquired taste. It's for some people. It's for, it was not for me. No, it's for old white people, which is what the yeah. people that were voting for the Oscar at the time. How are you going to tell me The King's Speech was superior to all those movies toy story 3 was nominated for best picture uh, it's a great really? movie. oh absolutely but i yeah. just didn't know that it was nominated yeah it's that good of a movie toy story 3 was that one makes me so emotional that yeah. movie, i thought they were gonna die and i no, literally I believed we all it thought we were, were okay. <laughs> but like i just think it's crazy it just shows how the uh, Oscars both. I feel like the Oscars really do like go with the safe choices. That's why like people are like, oh, that's an Oscar bait movie yeah. because there's just yeah. specific things that like fall into the category. And I think there's like a checklist. Yeah, there's a checklist. And I think well, I think now we're starting to see like a shift, which is why like Parasite and like, I mean that's the only one I've seen because they only just added, they I mean because they only just added a bunch of new diverse voters to the Academy because they got so much backlash in what 2016 yeah. about oscar so white so then they added like a lot of new members that are younger people in the not i mean they're not super young but like you know younger, younger in, in the academy award terms in the academy award terms so i think that's another thing to look forward to when it comes to the oscars is like now we're probably going to get a lot more um, diversity and just like oh just the dramas are nominated for everything <laughs> as I, I love dramas but like uh, it's fucking boring Marriage sometimes Story. Marriage Story is a great I film know, I, love it. I didn't even finish movie, it but, but I, I don't but Oscar bait I, I will say right? it is Oscar it is 100% Oscar bait but if I wanted to watch white people fight I would just go to like Target. I don't <laughs> okay know. you can't tell me that fight scene and when they're freaking divided, like literally, oh my God. Okay. are you okay? <laughs> I love it. I no, it's a good movie, scene. but I just I was like, oh my god. Anyway, Anyways. I was gonna be completely off track every five seconds. Um, yeah, Black Swan. Oh, I love Darren. Wait, what's his name? Darren. Darren, Darren, Darren Aronofsky. Darren Aronofsky. Also, okay. Last time I'll get off track. It's so weird to me that he. Okay, so they made Mother right, and Jennifer Lawrence is starring in that movie, and then they dated. For like a little bit, and then they like. What? Yeah, they did. But like oh. during the movie and like right after. Yeah. But that movie is not romantic. It doesn't. Oh, how old is Darren Aronofsky? I don't know. Let's. I was completely getting off track again. Um, it's okay. I guess. It's not a big deal, but like I don't know. I just I. Interesting. Interesting to see. Okay, get out. Wait, well, we didn't even talk. He's fifty-one. We oh, okay. Barely talked about Black Swan. I haven't seen it. I know, but okay. Anyways, you guys need to watch it. It's actually really good. Um, I think it was, I didn't really consider it a horror movie until like I looked at the list of like horror movies and I was like, yeah, I guess it is a horror movie. And I think uh, Mila Kunis, like, I don't know, this the parallels between Mila Kunis's character and Natalie Portman's character is just so interesting. And I think it's interesting take, like you wouldn't think like to make a horror movie about a ballet company. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I mean? But I think there is, there's a lot of just layers to the story and I think also like it has to do with mental illness and I, it's just it's just a really interesting um story in general so I I think it I, deserves more I hype. think it deserves more hype I mean it's pretty hype I mean I think it's hype it was hyped at the moment but yeah. I don't think people like our age watched it really yeah I don't know. like I'm gonna talk about it does it do you think it'll have longevity? Because I don't. People don't really talk about it anymore, and now it's like ten years old. Yeah. Do you think it'll have? Maybe it'll have like a second life on like a streaming platform. Because you know how yeah. that happens. Oh, like yeah. sometimes, like it'll get put on like a streaming platform, and it just depends on like 
if somebody tweets about it at the right moment or somebody makes a TikTok about it at the right yeah. moment, like it, yeah. it, I think it could. I think it's an interesting enough story that it could have a second. I life. think it might get more culty than anything. Ooh, um, yeah, that's a good if, point. I feel like Definitely. it's cult movie material. Yeah, because I um, think the first time I watched it, I was really confused because it, it is like it. It's like Darren Oski's like thing is like, oh, it's like kind of normal, and then it's like, oh shit, yeah. no. It's so fucking weird. Yeah. There's like a lot of things going on. Like it's a re- rea- It's like one of those things where it's like reality, but it's also like there's some fucked up shit yeah. going on. It feels like a background. panic attack happening. Yes, yes, yes. It like is- his movie is literally. <gasps> no, literally, <laughs> that's how it is. Yeah. Yeah. So how does it compare tonally to Mother? Does it get as stressful? Because I can't rewatch Mother because of no. Okay. If you're- Black Swan, you can definitely rewatch. I think. I think uh, Black Swan is like a mild anxiety attack. Like that's like social anxiety for me. Like, right. like I'm really like, I'm like really nervous, but then I'm like, oh, okay, no, it's fine. You're like, okay. But then okay. mother is like one that I literally have to like blown. take myself out of the situation and like really like go in the corner and like deal with myself for a second. Yeah. That's, that's how I would like describe. <laughs> that movie rattled me to my core. Cause I saw it during like, it wasn't like a test screening. It was like an advanced screening. Cause they were, they were trying to do like a TV spot where they were like filming people's reactions. Um, and so I went to that with my mom because I was like, oh, mother. And oh, um, no. it was like a month or two months before the movie was going to come out. So <laughs> I watched the movie. I was shaking like the last like half hour. And then it's they put dry. you in this dark room with a camera and a light. And they're like, tell us about what you thought. And it was it was so jarring. And then I had to sit with that for two months with and no one. Talking, no critics anybody. had seen it. I couldn't Google like what That's just crazy. happened. Like I literally just had to sit with it for two months. Yeah. Oh. Um, that know. might be why I like it. <laughs> I don't know. I think I don't know if like is the word. Yeah. Okay. I think, I think mother's ending is like a oh, like you're really gonna like like it's kind of scarring in a way. Yeah, it definitely scarred me. But I think Black Swan is kind of like, oh, huh. well, okay, like inter like it's interesting. I'm not telling everyone. I'm like, oh, that's re-. like I, I was just like my mouth was literally dropped. I remember like physically like my mouth was like, huh. But also, I was really young when I first watched it. But then I watched it again, and I was just like, this is really good. Like, it has, like, the same, like, appeal as, like, like, it's like a horror, horror-y kind of, like, whiplash, you know? Okay. Because they're, like, they're people that are, like, super into their craft and, like, they will go to the, like, the utmost lengths to, like, fucking be with that. But oh, they're also like, mentally ill. like Suspiria, kind of. Mm, yeah. But the new one. Not, yeah. I don't know yeah. if the dairy ones are. Okay, anyway. Um... I, sorry, I'm still thinking about the panic attack thing. It's because what, like what other movies comparison. has he made? I feel like all his Those movies his kind of biggest, escalate I like think. that. Okay, anyway. Also, the way that when you were talking, I realized that they parodied Black Swan in Scary Movie 5. Yeah. So, like, 100% is like, that's yeah. like what makes it count as a horror movie. I think, that's is if funny. it's if it's parodied in a scary movie. Um, movie. <laughs> okay, so get out. Um, I think it's safe to say that. Kim and I loved this movie. Mm -hmm. Um, Kylie, what did you think of Get Out when you first saw it? I was so obsessed and I was was just so surprised at how genius it was because I'd never really been a fan of Jordan Peele. Like I just, I, it's not, not by like personal choice or anything. I just never really happened upon the key and Peele sketches or anything. Just never really followed his work before. Um, I just knew that he was a comedian. And the way that comedy was also interwoven into the story too, just took me back. And I think it worked so well because I feel like in his movies, the comedy is not meant to like deliver a punchline. It's more so, it's just realistic. They're like genuine reactions from people that just are shocking and happen to be funny. And so it's the way that he kind of weaves the genres together and creates such an, um, like an effectively terrifying story at the same time, while also critiquing our social atmosphere and stuff. It just, I, I'm obsessed, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Get Out is genius. That movie, um, so good. But also I think how you were saying like, and I, Kim and I kind of talked about this in another podcast, but the way that comedy um, is in this movie, it's not, cause there's a horror comedy and then there's like comedy in a horror movie. This movie is not a horror comedy. At no. all. I wouldn't consider that at all. Um, it's not like like a Scream Queens kind of, that's like horror comedy. Like it's supposed to be 
yeah funny over yeah. anything but i think with this it was like you were saying they're more like reactions and so i think a lot of people can relate to that because a lot of people use comedy to sort of as a defense the mechanism scene. yeah um i mean i know i do yeah so i think that was more, it just made the characters feel more alive um yeah and you like it like pulls you into the story like immediately yeah um which is why i think this movie is so good Definitely. and uh, also the fact that it was also just so bold too in its critiques of microaggressions especially because so many people mm-hmm. think they are not racist and su- surprise <laughs> Um, yeah, so just the boldness, too, which is also yeah. why a lot of people don't like Jordan Peele. Yeah, the <laughs> actor that plays the dad, um, the, the white dad, he didn't know that the whole, like, oh, I would have voted for Obama uh, again if I could. He didn't know, like, that that was, like, people actually a joke that I was, like, that. yeah, he didn't understand what the point of that line was. Um, which I think says everything that you need to know yeah. about Did that line. Did we talk about what it was nominated for? Um, no, we didn't. So okay. Get Out was nominated for um, Best Actor, Best Picture, Best Director, um, but it only won Best Original Screenplay. Um, yeah. Me, me thinking, I don't remember what other movies were nominated for Best Picture, but I, I definitely thought it was going to win. Let me see. I definitely, but in like in my heart, I was like, is a horror movie really going to win over all these other ones? Yeah. It's yeah. not, okay, there's a lot of good movies that year. I oh, do remember, okay, my. 2018 was a great year for movies, like the 2020, 2018 Oscars, besides the post, anyways. Um, <laughs> there was The Shape of Water, Darkest Hour, Dunkirk, Fat and Thread, Three Billboards Out of Sight, Ebbing, Missouri, which is a slept on movie, yeah. um, Get Out, The Post, Call Me By Your Name, Lady Bird. Wow. Uh, personally, I think that's a fantastic year. That is a great lineup. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I also think, too, that was such a great year for movies in general but mm-hmm. also i feel like there was definitely a shift after get out came out and 2017 is also the year that it the remake of it came mm-hmm. out and it just was such an iconic year for horror i think and i think absolutely horror fans are going to look yeah. back at, at this sort of generation as a redefining moment because jordan peele offered movies that were su- such fresh ideas that weren't a remake or a sequel or anything mm-hmm. like that and is kind of redefining the genre a little bit and it's really exciting oh 100 percent. because i feel like you see like the same stories in horror which is why yeah. maybe some yeah. people like aren't like a huge fan so i think jordan peele especially because like you don't get black horror like Uh-oh. ever like it's just it's like a new like real new genre. thing and I think it'll, like, he shows people, like, yeah, you can take your own experience and make it into horror, like, yeah. as a person of color. And then I also, what was I going to say? Well, um, go ahead. Okay. Well, also, I think how you were saying, like, that it was a great year for horror fans. Oh, that's what I was going to say. I was going to say, <laughs> that's the year I got into horror. Yeah. Just because it, and then Get Out was, like, right after that. And I was like, I love these movies. Yeah. So, they're... like, 2017 changed my mind. <laughs> Well, I think it's because I don't think there's ever been a time, because I remember, like, when I started getting into horror, which was, like, I don't know, maybe, like, 2010, there, it was, like, two horror movies a year, and one of them Mm -hmm. was bad, always. It was, like, like, just a, they released it around Halloween, and it was, like, the teen, it's a bunch of teenagers, and they all die in the end, and it's just to make money. Yeah, and so... It was you were just kind of like okay time to see the horror movie of the year but more recently it's been like there's a new horror movie in theaters almost every month which is i don't think i've ever experienced that before um and they're they're not yes they're still the little the lucy hale horror movies yeah but you have to because you know you gotta get teeny boppers into the theater and and i'd rather have them there during that than during like because i hate when like because horror movies during like opening weekend there's a lot of kids that go there and I think now with like horror being a little bit more artistic and like um, abstract, oh. kids are expecting it to just be jump scares. And so they go and see a movie like, I don't know, like Suspiria, for example. No one's like Midsummer, like Hereditary. Mi- that's I feel like it's a, fair... a better example. Yeah. They go in to see Midsummer and they're like, oh, that wasn't scary. And I'm like, but that's not. There yes, was... it was though. Yeah, You're crazy. That wasn't the jump scare. Like, like that wasn't their definition. The of fear scary. was different. It was. <laughs> It was deeper rooted. <laughs> yeah, like Midsummer's gonna stick yeah. with me more than like Truth or Dare. Mm-hmm. But also, just a note, like because that was oh. Jordan Fish, uh, Jordan Fisher, jo- Jordan Peele. I was thinking about, I was literally really thinking about Jordan Fisher before this. Anyways, <laughs> Jordan Peele, um, for that being his first feature film, and like to be 
nominated for all that stuff especially coming from a comedic background and like mm -hmm. the fact that that movie because i remember like people were like why is he doing that like he's a comedian mm -hmm. like you know people are very much like stick to your trade which is like stupid get out of here with that yeah that's... like people are multifaceted and have different interests like all the time like anyways um that's another rant but i think it's so cool that he got <laughs> like accepted into like the basically into the academy from, from his first thing like he was nominated with Gamal de toro greta gerwig christopher nolan with greta gerwig that was like her first as well christopher nolan though and paul Tim thomas anderson like you are with iconic people like how crazy is that that both of those people greta gerwig and jordan peele like their first like big films or their first films like that they directed like got that much yeah traction that they're like I, I personally would be like, floored. I would be rattled to my core. Like, Paul Thomas Anderson knows who I am because I'm, I'm in like the same category. <laughs> a woman and a black man too. Like, That's yep. Crazy. Mm -hmm. Um, love that. But yeah, I, get out. I will love that movie forever. And it's yeah. gonna be, it's get gonna be, stands. it's gonna like age so well with like oh. The Exorcist and Jaws. Yeah. It's gonna be, it's gonna stay with those um, mm -hmm. movies. I also think it redefined um, how music is used in horror. Um, Cool. Yeah, in modern. our yeah. in our society as opposed to like how Jaws and Halloween and those kind of movies would use them. Yeah. Music. Especially I think people our age are like really into soundtracks. So like when we hear songs that we know and we grew up with in, or like are popular at the time in a uh, film we're automatically going to be more like the amount of times that I've watched a trailer and they've used a song that I like I'm like I'm going like, to see I'm gonna it. Watch it. I'm going to watch it. So um, I'm smart with that. Redbone. I mean it's Mm -hmm. It's kind of an unexpected choice for that being kind of the anthem of Get Out, but Redbone, I mean, like it makes sense, you know, featuring other yeah. black horror stuff, but. Yeah, that's what Devin was saying in our podcast about black horror. He was like, it makes sense though, because like, stay woke. Like he just says that and like, like he's yeah. literally it's, it's it literally, it, yeah, it's, it's just like a cautionary kind of yeah. like song to send you off into this world, which is like, oh. Uh, also the way that, I, that they use this movie um, in my film classes, and it's like all with all these other like classic movies, and then Get Out. It's it a, just it's shows how classic yeah, movie, it shows 100%. how well it was made. Yes. Um, anyway, we're gonna talk about Get Out for like three hours. Yeah. I literally could. We literally um, yeah. <laughs> So Parasite. Um, I love this movie yeah. so yes. much. I, okay. it, it deserves all the hype because Absolutely. I remember when it was talked about, everyone was like, "It's so good," blah, blah, blah. and I was like. And you know, like how you, it's always like people hype it up so much I and mean, then like you get to it and you're like, whatever. No, no, this is this absolutely is worth every single hype. I think every person in the world should be required to watch this movie. Absolutely. Like it's that good. Required viewing. It's just so amazing. And I think it's crazy that like, I think it's especially crazy that it's like a foreign film and like yeah. so many, it's, it, it, I think it just shows like more people should watch foreign films because like, themes are universal and that they that should film get more, yeah. is like universal themes like well yes. i have a like a little it's like a little story about that but when i went to go see it in theaters um when it was allowed to go to theaters yeah. um i think it was like a month before the oscars and or no it was when they re-released all of them at amc so mm -hmm. that you could catch up on all the like ones that were nominated um but there's this this old white couple in front of me and my mom and so the movie starts, and it's not in English, right? Um, and there's like they have the subtitles, but the the lady like she's like looking around, and every obviously every most people knew that it wasn't in English. Yeah. I feel like, and so she was looking around, and then she like stands up, and she's like, it, 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 like this movie's not in English. And I was like, oh yeah, that's just that's the language of the movie. She's like, they don't have it in English. And I was, she was like, and I was like, no, it, like that's how it was released. So she girl, leaves. can you read? No, literally, she leaves. <laughs> she asks the attendant like, like if. They show it in English, they don't. So she comes back, she sits down. She was like complaining at first. By the time that movie ended, she was like, I love that movie so much. Like, I'm gonna tell all my friends okay. to watch. I was like, Okay, character That's development. Crazy. Right, okay, character okay. development. <laughs> For you this gave her two woman. hours. Yeah. yeah. Um, At I, least she didn't leave. I was gonna be so mad if she no, left. Thank God that she. Stayed. I thought she was gonna leave too. My mom and I were like, yeah. she's gonna leave right now, or she's gonna say something racist. I was ready for it. Um, <laughs> but no, she sat through and she loved the movie. And I think that's a lot of people like they they just give it a try. I promise yes. that movies like this where they're not in English or um, they're outside of your comfort zone, you don't know if you're not gonna like it because you've yeah. never seen it before, um, mm -hmm. which I think is 
Why yeah. Parasite is so amazing. And it was nominated for Best Picture, Best Director, Best Original Screenplay, Inter International Feature Film. Um, and it won all of those, and it, but it didn't win for Best Production Design or Best Film Editing. Which like four is feel, so huge. Yeah. That's yeah. crazy. And like the way, yeah. And the reactions from them was the best thing ever. Yeah, they're so I, sweet. The way that Bong Joon-ho looked at his, at looked at his win. Yeah. And someone else was like giving the speech, but he was off to the side. There's like a gif that was on Twitter. I watched it at least 400 times. He just looked at it and like, just yeah. yeah. That I, was my lock screen for the longest time. Was him like yeah. literally? There's a picture of him just staring at Same, it. It was my Twitter yeah. header. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was my lock screen for a minute. Incredible. Cool. I think um one thing that really surprised me about this movie, and also what surprised me about how it won so many awards, is the fact that it mixes so many genres. And generally, I'm not totally a fan of that, unless it's like an action comedy or like a dark comedy. Usually, like comedy is is fine. It, mm -hmm. But this one was a drama. It was a thriller. It was a comedy. It was a horror. At the end, yeah. I. It, it did so much and some and that doesn't usually work for me because usually i i'm just like okay this is confused like tonally it's too conflicted mm -hmm. it worked somehow it yeah worked it worked so, so well. well it's so good like i'm just i'm truly in awe of like how he was able to do that because yeah you're right like it's it's like pick a lane you know what i mean yeah <laughs> but i think that should that just shows like uh an abil the ability for writing and i yeah. think that's why it was like so awesome like i think best screenplay was definitely like well deserved because like mm -hmm. the the way that he was able to do that so flawlessly was just yeah. and also the way that like it translates because like we obviously we only read the translations that are given to us mm -hmm. we don't know if like for example That's when true. some things are being translated they culturally mean different things or mm -hmm. like sayings are different um so like some jokes don't land sometimes when you're watching a translated movie, um, but everything worked perfectly. You yeah. understand exactly what's happening. You understand the jokes, you understand the delivery, like how the actors are working with them. Um, yeah, and usually there's cultural barriers with that, but it just so well depicted like the complexity of the human experience too. Mm -hmm. And I think also there's a lot of like Americanized things in the film, like yes. very much so like the, the rich family was very much like they they did a lot of americanized things like right. the child was obsessed with like cowboys and like well because they know. also were like there was a little bit it wasn't the main point of the movie but there was also a little bit of like commentary on like american consumers oh, yeah, yeah. like on, in, especially with the rich family oh, yeah. um which i thought was very very good like he it's just, so good just, just seeing good like movie. literally just seeing like the parallels like literally and figuratively mm -hmm. between the two families is just so interesting and i think it's it's awesome that they were able to parallel that so well um between the two families because sometimes like when you get a lot of characters like it's all it gets a little messy but like it everyone yeah. had a purpose yeah and they all hold their the, the, and there were side there was other characters outside the family so like oh, yeah. yeah there was like okay so that's at least like 12 characters and they all hold their ground i think and um, their motivations make sense yeah, absolutely. They they each feel like real people. Yeah. Um, I completely forgot what I was just gonna say. Sorry. Oh, my bad. Um, well, <laughs> I can pick it up. I just want to make a brief comment that this movie is obviously making commentary about class consciousness and mm -hmm. the poor mass versus the wealthy elite, the wealthy few. And can we just talk about how they invited Jeff Bezos to the Oscars and then Parasite won and they like showed his reaction, the, just the fact that like that movie that was, you know, all about class consciousness won and then they have this dumbass billionaire. <laughs> no, literally. I also think that it was so interesting that like, um, so when they were giving the speech, they like started to tell him to like stop. Um, and then all the like white rich actors in the front were like, let them talk. I was like, you guys okay. know that the movie was like they were talking trash about you like yeah. obviously like i felt like it just went over their heads like yeah it's a good movie and well, like well i could... think also to a certain degree you can admit your own faults yeah but you know what i mean well because we don't know these celebrities so you can't just That's make a true. full judgment yeah. about all these rich white people you know what i mean yeah. sorry 
Like I, I oh, okay. understand like rich, like, I, I don't know. I think we should check ourselves sometimes. Like, I think it, it like putting down other people, is just, like when well, you I'm not putting them, them down. Like, I'm just saying like, they, it's literally, they are rich, yeah, white yeah. privileged people. Yeah, exactly. So maybe that's why they were like, they're using their own, like they feel like mm-hmm. let them talk because like they deserve to talk. Like it's like, the Oh, well, no, well, that wasn't the problem I had with it. The problem yeah. I had with it was like, it felt like, I don't know. It had the same energy as the Gal Gadot. Uh, no, it didn't. I oh. think it did. <laughs> Where no, it just it felt didn't. like I was like, guys, you know that they were like, it's about you. I don't know. That's just how I felt my experience watching it. I think it's I, also I, just like as a creative, like you're just seeing somebody get so excited, so you want them to like be able to get speak their piece. Yeah. yeah. Also, with the Gal Gadot thing, she was just not self-aware in that moment whatsoever. I think. That's I think that's a the theme of Gal Gadot <laughs> that we're like realizing is like she is she's not she's not good at reading the room. Gal Gadot, oh god, Girl. let's not get into that because <laughs> oh. I was yeah, such I'm a Gal Gadot stand, but it, this year made it very hard. Yeah, for me to like be like, and she keeps going. She just keeps. She going. doesn't stop. Um, she, at least Priyanka Chopra kind of like faded into obscurity for. Jesus. So, <laughs> well, she did. She kind of did after she just yes. clapped at nothing. Like, I haven't really heard much of her. Yeah, she took she her just, seat. She's just, yeah, she's just working on things. Yeah. <laughs> um, also, I think it just also says a, a lot about American culture. Yeah. But Trump, was. it was some rally, and he was like, oh, like, it, uh, a movie that wasn't even an English one. And I was like, Guaranteed he oh, didn't even fucking watch it. He did not watch that movie. Definitely not. And he was like, can we take it back to the good old days, like 1939? He, he brought up Gone with the Wind or something? Yeah. I was <laughs> like, sir. I mean, like, are we even surprised at this point? But, like, no, that but he says these things, but... <sighs> it's just, it's just the way he's so culturally unaware. It's hilarious, yeah. but also, oh my gosh. I'm sorry if there's beeping, by the way. There's... <laughs> my name I wrong. didn't hear it until right now. Yeah. Um... Honestly, so Parasite that, is better no, than Donald Trump. Uh, don't forget to vote. What do you mean? We still do this nonsense. I know, but I'm just saying since we're all oh, since it's right relevant. Now, yeah, being part of your democracy is super cool and super fun. Definitely. Yes, nice. absolutely. It's. I feel like the, the most of our listeners are from California, and the deadline to for early voting is almost here. So yeah. okay. finish your ballot, turn it in, everyone. Um, <laughs> we have right. to. Okay, so. <laughs> Um, Did you see like the amount of early votes we've already gotten? That, yeah, they like and shattered com- records. Sh- I was like, I love this. I love this song so much. But also, it's kind of scary because it's also like, so yeah, it's the people who are like, we want Trump out, but it's also the people who are like, we need to make sure Trump stays in. Which is uh, yeah, but I feel like he's not know, winning. Maybe. Out. Oh no, yeah. absolutely never. Also, the way he's not giving us aid for the fires because he he knows he's not gonna. Anyway, um, anyway. We'll gonna... yeah. <laughs> We get this really is not angry. a yeah. This is not a Trump sponsored podcast, everyone. No. Um, okay. okay, we're a Biden podcast. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Well, a Biden for the election, then we're going to hold him accountable. For right. Yes. Settle for Biden podcast. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's talk a little bit about the snubs that we think horror movies that should have been nominated should have won. Maybe. Um, I think let's go by person, and each person can. I didn't write nothing. Well, I feel like you have thoughts. Yeah, my main thought is Ari Aster. Ab- okay, okay, so yeah. I'll go first with that because that was my first one. Hereditary and Midsummer. The disrespect. Snubbed. Florence Pugh and Tony Collette. A moment of silence. <laughs> A moment of silence. They, they deserved and they needed to win an Academy Award <laughs> because I have never been so shook I, that's the only word i could think of yeah of it's gonna be confusing floor so i, was like, I, I, I love that word yeah it's a good word yeah. um i just have never seen i that those movies changed my life they're so I, good honestly i and also like more redefining movies are mm-hmm. redefining the genre and a lot of, the horror community is very loud about the fact that they don't really like them because just classic horror fans are so annoying mm-hmm. mostly Older white men, okay. Absolutely. Um, they just they just love their slashers and they love their simple stories. Yeah. Uh, just the yeah. new <laughs> Sorry, you can't Jake. lie though. There's no <laughs> lie detected. Yeah. But then there's us, the new generation of filmmakers that are just, you know, ecstatic. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. I'm yes. I think it's great. I think I think our generation, I'm so excited because I think there's gonna be a lot more like 
genre bending but like good genre bending mm -hmm. versus like uh, really cheap like grabs at like it's it's that obvious money. yeah exactly and i think that's what i'm excited for and i just love our ass like his his mm -hmm. his freaking the way that he writes these characters and like especially these female characters especially being yeah. a man he's white right is he white yes being a white man being able to write right. like complex i no on the white we don't know for sure if he's yeah. white. um but being a man <laughs> yeah. and being able to write these amazing female driven stories yes. both of them are female driven stories and they're both like complex female characters Absolutely. and yeah. i just Midsommar, oh. Midsommar it has so much to do with the feminine experience too because mm -hmm. it's he said himself it's yeah, not necessarily a horror story he was like it's a breakup movie it's right. yes breakup. and hereditary is a family drama and it's, it's centered sense. around the women and we love <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I think it's also interesting. I saw him, uh, when he was so he made Hereditary, right? And a movie studio wanted him to make another one. And mm -hmm. the way they pitched the movie to him, they were like, "We want you to write a movie about a group of teenagers that go to like a festival off somewhere, and then they start getting killed off." When you hear that, it sounds very much like slasher, cold, like yeah, slasher, slasher, like yeah. Eli Roth kind of movie. And the way what he did with that concept. And just like a complete, oh, something downstairs. A completely original movie that just Danny is one of the best horror characters in history. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In any horror movie I have ever seen. Because she's in my life. so real, and like uh -huh. there's so much to her, and like especially as a woman, like it is like that is a female experience. Yeah. <laughs> like it's heightened for sure, but at the bones of it, like a lot of women go through relationships with men like that. So I think just seeing her also prevail and like get over that and also get over some family trauma at the same time, like yeah. is yeah. just like she went through it. Yeah, like at the end, like I know, like it's kind of like a reach for me to be like, yeah, super powerful because it's like a very <laughs> like it's, deep ending. Yeah, yeah right. but I think no character development. Yes. But yeah. Yeah. Nonetheless. Yes, exactly. Like at first, that first time I watched it, I was like, so it, it was like that was like I guess a bad, not bad in terms of like it was not well written. I mean bad in like. The characters didn't win and then when i rewatched it i was like she won though she won she, she literally won, won. She, she was won. like a final girl and he i think also another thing that ari esther is doing and a lot of the other movies that we kind of are going to talk about that had snubs um the they're redefining what a final girl means yes um 100 in terms it's Check not out just next week's episode. yeah it's not just like <laughs> a girl barely wearing clothes that it has blood all it has over to her do and, more with her personality right and like <laughs> oh, enduring oh, it oh a concept a woman having a personality in a film. Um, yeah, a thought. Anyways, yeah, we're also at Ari Aster fan club. Absolutely. One hundred percent. And like, I think just the way he thinks about characters and thinks about like storytelling is just like amazing. Like every time, everything he said, everything I've read, everything I've heard him talk about, I'm like, absolutely, mm -hmm. yes, it's, sir. I think it's because his artistic moves, like they're not they're not made on a whim they, they're so deliberate and they mm -hmm. and he has so much intention which if you're not i don't know like if you're a classic horror fan and all you care about is like gore and stuff like you're not gonna really appreciate the nuance and like mm -hmm. the way that these artistic elements are catering to the story as a whole and like how everything comes together it's just yeah ugh. so why do we think that the oscar snubs ari aster um i personally think it's because Okay, well, for a lot of the complaints I saw about, because, like, let's be honest, that a lot of the voters are male and white. Mm -hmm. A lot of the complaints... Because the villain is the... Is, is because, yeah, yeah. They were like, why yeah. did that happen to the guy? And I'm like, because... Like, I don't want to say he deserved it, but, like, he was, <laughs> he was asking for it, you know? But, like, the, like what happens what? to the male characters has... Like, that's not usually what they do, you know, mm -hmm. to male characters. Yeah. Um, and I think they were just upset by that ending. Um... And also with Hereditary, I don't know. I really don't know. I don't know why they didn't. I, Hereditary just, it might have just pushed the limit a little bit too much for some people, I guess, in terms of horror. Like there's, I guess like, uh, we don't do spoilers here, huh? Um, <laughs> no, we do. We do do spoilers. We, yeah. Well, I'll, yeah. I'll just say there's a very traumatic um, death of a younger person. And yeah. that is probably a little bit too much for some of the Oscars voters That's true. is my guess, maybe. But also, that movie, oh my god, that scene shook me to my core. I was, but, I was not expecting that at all. No, me either. I gasped. I was literally, everybody gasped. I was literally holding my knees. Trailers. Yeah. 
I would. Oh, I don't think. I don't think my mom and I have ever reacted that much oh, to a scene in my entire life. I had a full on body reaction yeah. to Hereditary. I think Hereditary was like the first movie that kind of like did also like it wasn't jump scares, but it was like genuinely fucking scary. Like it it's was genuinely terrifying. terrifying. Like I had to like think. I had to watch like half the video before I went to sleep because I knew that shit was gonna like. Videos? No, I always do that. If something like really shakes me up, I have to watch something happy to like counterbalance it. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I think like yeah, I think Hereditary and Midsummer are just amazing. Um, definitely, I feel like the reason that Daniel said is why the Oscars Sadly. kind of just like snubbed him. And also, I think that's yeah. a trend with some of the other movies that I kind of wrote down was, um, I think Lupita Nyong'o deserved an Academy Award, at least a nomination for oh. her work in Us. Yeah. Oh. Um, also, Suspiria, another female, like, driven horror film. Are we seeing a theme here? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Do you guys see what's going on here? Like, I just think... Anna Ch- Anya Taylor-Joy in The Witch. In The Witch. Also. Oh, my. Hmm. The women, the women mm. will get what they deserve yeah. Yeah. in the in the coming decade or the coming twenty years, especially once our generation is more involved. In with, charge. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think, yeah, I think I, female characters in horror, I think, are so interesting because, um, I don't know when it, when I watch a horror movie with a male in it, I'm just like, eh. Why we've seen it? They're because just like the male experience to a large degree is just not very complicated, and uh-huh. women have to go through a lot more. And there's just a lot more yeah. material there, I guess. Especially white male, because sure. like we saw with Daniel Kaluuya's character in Get Out, like he mm-hmm. was de- dealing with all the racial tensions between him and the family. Of didn't his Daniel Kaluuya get a Best Actor nomination? Yeah, but he didn't. Win. But he yeah, got but he got nominated. Yeah, which is so big. like the disrespect to Lapita. Yeah. Because I think her character, like, is so complicated. She had to play two roles. And you, they're, not for a second do you even remember that it's the same yeah, actress. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was completely in, like, Enamored. I was in the story. Like, I, I was there. I didn't, I wasn't even thinking about, like, oh, how did they film the two people yeah. scenes? I was just like, they're two different people. No, like, yeah, I was just exactly. convinced. Down to literally every single tiny bodily mannerism, they were different. Mm-hmm. They were completely yes. different characters. Yes, and I think as an actor, that's the, the, <laughs> the speechless. Yeah, I um, can't. the disrespect is just. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. I, I wish they had given us at least a little bit of recognition because I think. Yeah. I know a lot of people want, weren't expecting that from Jordan Peele, but I loved it. Yeah, you have um, Willem Dafoe and Robert Pattinson in one. Oh no, Kylie wrote that. Oh, oh okay. I put that. Yeah, just because. So Robert Eggers directed The White House and The Witch. Those movies are absolutely not for everyone. They're not my mm-hmm. favorite. Oh, yeah. They are incredibly immersive experiences, and the performances of Robert Pattinson and Willem Dafoe, like, it, you're just yeah. you're completely transported. Whether or not you you like the movie, there is you definitely should have an appreciation for at least the artistic elements in yeah, it. Yeah, definitely. Performances. It's they're crazy. I think that's a good point that you bring up like with movies. I think like it could like you could not like generally a story, but you can appreciate the aspects of the movie that are good. Right. Because I think yeah. a lot of times people are so like they're like, well I didn't like it so I don't fucking like it. They're like, but, I like, didn't like it or I did like yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. And it's like no, you can like like certain parts and not like other parts. Like that is okay. Yeah. Like sorry like not even sorry like that make that normal yeah. exactly but i i yeah i agree with you i think both of their performances were great i kind of forgot it was willem dafoe and robert patterson like and i think that i think that's it speaks volumes especially because they're such high profile actors that you kind of forget like who they actually are and like because they're so into the characters and like they're yeah every every movie. movie william defoe is in when he first pops up you're like oh it's william defoe and then you just forget and you're like yeah. oh it's that character william defoe is He's such so a great good. actor um but yeah i think i yeah oh absolutely i think that at least that movie the lighthouse should deserve at least a nomination for best director because that movie was i think it was it was I, really it good deserved that um, i'm surprised it didn't yeah i'm surprised it didn't i don't think it got nominated for anything right yeah because I think people were too weirded out by it. Because it is an it's odd movie, film, yeah. but like, I don't know. People want to get out of their comfort zones a little yeah. bit more. Yeah. Also, another thing that I was completely shocked by is that Psycho and The Shining, two one of like two of the most iconic horror films ever, never received a nomination. 
yeah for anything which is just wild to me yeah like but I think also, I think it, it does suck. Like, I think all of us would love to have an Oscar one day. Mm -hmm. But I think also, like, I would be okay if my film, like, stood the test of time and there's, it's and still, still it, like, past me. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Like, it, it's still iconic. Right. I get what you're saying. I get, like, in, like, your physical life, like, having the nomination or the, having that recognition in your, like, lifetime is huge. But I also think thinking about your legacy that you've left, especially on the, both of those films left a legacy on Absolutely. film. So I think that's also huge that I think sometimes people don't take into consideration. Yeah. I, I have a lot of time to think in quarantine. So that's what yeah. I think about. Well, I think like Hitchcock <laughs> never won an Academy Award, but he yeah. literally invented film techniques. Yeah. Like he, he's like, is such a like yeah. pioneer of like film has it gone like an honorary one because they do those sometimes oh i don't know maybe, maybe. He, i feel like he at least deserves one yeah he does he's so. kind of a weirdo but he should i yeah. mean he's kind of a problematic person oh but... yeah <laughs> but like what he did for film is yeah you know other he, other people are using it it for less problematic <laughs> like less problematic yeah, directors yeah. are using his techniques yeah so we can at least thank him for yeah. the techniques that he invented um, that we are seeing in better movies. Yeah, Jack Hilson went off in The Shining. Absolutely. I just read that. And Shelley Duvall. Yeah. Both of them did great. I can't... The way that the way that they were both treated, but especially Shelley, mm -hmm. is really infuriating. It, and I, I just... I also... I think Stanley Kubrick stands are really annoying, so I'm sorry if you're... Oh. oh. Just the way that oh. he treated... Hundred. Uh... <laughs> The, the way that she had to keep a water bottle at her side at all times because she was running out of tears in her eyes. Mm -hmm. it, it, enough said. Absolutely. <laughs> enough said. I, I personally, I, I like some of Stanley Kubrick's movies. I do not like him as a person because person of what I've read about him. And I, that, that was why at first I hated The Shining because yeah. I was so mad that like he took Stephen King's story and basically told him he was going to do whatever he wanted with it. And Stephen King himself hated the movie. Because yeah. he was like, that's not my story. Um, but when you learn to like appreciate yeah. it for what it is, and like I think at least production design should have been nominated because that movie, the, how, what other movie can you say that a carpet is iconic? No other movie can you say that like, oh, a, yeah. like Aladdin. a shower oh, is, okay. Sorry. Okay, can really? Well, like, do you know what I mean? Like the production yeah, yeah, design yeah. for that movie is so <laughs> yes, iconic and memorable. It is, it is, it is. Oh. <laughs> Aladdin. I mean, <laughs> I mean that, yeah. Well, because you said a, a what other carpet? carpet. So, like, I okay. sorry, he's a little. It's literally a carpet. That's true. Anyways, The Ring. Who said that? Oh, that I was. Mean, I I agree a hundred percent. I've never seen. That. I Gore Verbinski. Are you surprised? You oh, it's it's pretty scary. It's a it's a scary one. Um, but yeah. Gore Verbinski, I'm such a fan of. He also randomly directed the first three Pirates of the Caribbean movies. Um, but he has a very definite mm. style. I guess like if you haven't yeah. seen it, we don't have to dwell on it too for too long. But I highly recommend him. He also I directed a Cure for Wellness, which ah. is not gonna be for everybody, but yeah. um I didn't he even just know. artistically yeah. the fact that he the first three Pirates of the Caribbean movies. Well, also, I Childhood. think it's interesting that The Ring is, and this happens a lot with, like, horror movies, it's, like, they take a movie from, like, a different place, a different, like, like a foreign country, and they, like, redo it for American standards, mm -hmm. and a lot of times, most times, it does not work, but yeah. The Ring, American version, is so well done, um, it doesn't feel, it's like, so it's so good, and I just, it's, it's worth watching. Okay. I think it's one of the horror movies that is more, like, I'll watch it in the daylight. jump scary, yeah. But I think overall the aesthetic of it and like, the it has, characters are so memorable. The the plot is also very, very strong. So it's a mm -hmm. very plot driven movie. It's not driven yeah. by it's at, I mean it is driven by the atmosphere because it's so good, but um it's not like driven by the jump scares or the shock yeah, no. factor mm -hmm. or anything like that. It's it's a really, really well crafted story. And the the original Japanese film Ring You is also excellent. Mm -hmm. But I do actually think the remake is better. I think I agree with that too. <laughs> Which I like. I feel like sorry to give credit to a white man again, but like, like I just think yeah. that just the way that the story is because when you have the when you come with you come up with something out of nowhere, obviously it's not going to be perfect. So like they could see what would work and what didn't work with the original, and they could improve on it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And I think that's why the ring works so well. Well, and yeah, I agree that it should have been 
nominated at least for something. One other note that I'm going to go back to Ari Aster for a second because okay. like the daylight thing messed me up. Uh, the fact that the Ari Aster thing? because Midsummer is oh, all in daylight, absolutely. so he and like I think that was the biggest thing that I loved about Midsummer was like he took the because I feel like everybody gets scared of the dark, you know what I mean? But it all he showed like he kind of took the comfortability out of daylight as well. Yeah, and so I think, I think that was those, yeah. this, some of the horror scenes that happen at night. Um, they definitely are there, but he uses the night to make it scary, just like he uses the daylight to like uh, emphasize the horror and like what's happening in these situations, yeah, and why they are completely out of place in this. Exactly. I think, yeah, I think the main purpose that served was it was just so disorienting, and mm -hmm. so at a certain point, you're getting really tired of this perpetual daylight, and it's weird because sometimes the nighttime scenes even though the dark is usually scarier, it was almost like a comfort because it mm -hmm. offered sort of a sense of normalcy in this in this perpetual daytime. Um, yeah. And also just the way that tied in kind of with the psychedelic elements. Um, mm -hmm. I don't I don't really like psychedelics being used as a horror element, but he used them really effectively. So. Yeah, and I definitely think he didn't use them like as like the dry, the, like they're just an element of the story. They're not driving the story. Yeah. Um, yeah. And he doesn't, do it where like oh the whole thing was a hallucination it's more like the yeah. characters are not where they're supposed to be and yeah. so you can clearly see that through all the um different things that he does with the story yeah. i don't know i love midsummer and hereditary so much yeah i'm so excited too. for whatever he does next like i <laughs> will be there first in line i think tying it up mm -hmm. um what do you guys see since you guys are like the horror people mm -hmm. what do you guys hope like to see with the oscars and their relationship with horror and like the future I just, I obviously, I just want to see them more. Um, I also want to see more really high budget horror movies because as is um, a lot of the budget goes to producing sequels because they just know that that's what's going to make money. But those movies are not going to have the originality or whatever to get Oscar nominations, you know? So I right. was hoping that the movie industry like takes more chances on new directors and, and stuff like Jordan Peele and like Greta Thunberg, like just people that, you know, could potentially come out of nowhere and uh -huh. produce works of art. And Yeah, I agree. I don't want to see, I mean, I think remakes and sequels and reboots have their place, um, mm -hmm. but I think let's give them a rest for a little bit. And I want to see original horror films from uh, people of color, from women, from, and not only writing, but also directing, mm -hmm. I think, um, is how we're going to get original and fresh ideas and more like iconic horror movies um, that will like stand the test of time, I think, and yeah. that will be good enough to win a Kennedy. We're definitely in like a new generation of film or horror films. Uh, oh, yeah, absolutely. 100%. So I'm excited for that. Um, thank you for being here, Kylie. I really appreciate yeah. it. Thank you for giving us your knowledge. Uh -huh. Where can people find you? After um, this? So all my social media is at Kai Johns, so K-Y-J-O-H-N-Z, um, on like Instagram, Twitter, uh, wherever. And then I also do have a YouTube channel where I talk about horror movies, and you can just find me. My name is Kylie Roseanne. Roseanne is one word. And yeah, that that's where I am. Beautiful. Yeah. And then also, if you didn't get that, it'll be on our social medias. Make sure to go check it out and check out some more facts about Kylie. And yeah, we'll see you next week. Next week is going to be the Feminism of Final Girls. So yeah. Ooh, if you're right. interested by this, <laughs> we're going to be interested by that. All right. Thank you, everyone. Stay safe. Um, everyone vote. Like, Everybody vote. Register to vote and turn in your votes early. All right. Bye, everyone. <laughs>